Morning. Morning, you all right? How are you? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Sorry, just having a sweet. <laughs> oh, don't worry, mate. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, too early for sweets, but, uh, you know, hungry. <laughs> um, are you in space? Uh, well, I've, I don't have a desk, so I just thought I'd, um, you don't want to see the back of a couch, <laughs> so I just thought I'd uh, <laughs> put Fair something enough. a bit fancy on. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, how's sales going? Uh, bit... Hello. Morning. Morning. Yeah, the the not the sales aren't too bad. They're, I'm I'm getting like three to four a day at the minute, which but I've just got so much stuff that I need to get listed. Mm. I've got like four talk boxes of of gear that I need to list. Um, oh, okay. I did. Um, you know, you know, rummage around, don't you, Kieran? Rummage around. Yeah, yeah. So is um, I bought um, fifty six pieces of clothing from his missus, oh, yeah. two, two pound a pop. Um, so I'm just in the process of trying to get all them drafted up and listed. Nice. That keep you busy. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's all decent stuff. Like I've, I've sold um, I sold two items already. Um, hmm. A jumper for seventeen quid, and um, I'm trying to think what else did I sell. Can't remember what it was, but it was oh, sorry, a, a Nike sweatshirt for ten quid on vintage. Yeah. So, you know, if so, I could get anywhere between that for every single item which I list, then quid well, in. Yeah. times five your money, right? At least. Yeah, yeah. Um, you right, Claire? Hello, hello. <laughs> it's been a while. It has, yeah. It's been a it's been a couple of months. Um, I had a look at my emails, like trying to find this link. Last mm. one, I think I was here in July. So, yeah, we been... haven't got any um regular links now because um Jack was at school holidays. Yes, right. Yeah. So um mornings were difficult. Let's just say that. So we switched it to an evening. Um, and it was so random because ultimately, some me and um Laura put Jack to bed alternate nights. So the weeks always fall differently. Um. But yeah, it's fine. And Adam's for the first time on. Yeah, yeah, it's good. Normally, I'm either uh, in in my full time job or I'm uh, I'm busy doing other stuff. But yeah, it's been good to join this morning. Yeah. Yeah. So Friday's better for for you then. It's just it's just the way my shifts work out. Oh, um, okay. I do like a I do like a rolling rotor, four on, four off, two in, two off. Yeah. So it depends on on you know when I can um, you know when I can get That's on cool. in the morning. So yeah, morning. I think it would be a case yeah. of um it might be random again, but most mornings are free essentially for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um so the challenge. Claire's not in you're not involved in that, are you? No, no. Was that the like the, the challenge to what was what was it to make like five hundred pounds or something from That's it, from, from nothing. The house? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> from nothing. How did that how did it go? Um we're still on it. You've done quite well, haven't you, Adam, so far? Yeah, not too um, bad. I'm up to like 100 and 115 quid left to spend uh, with yeah, a couple of still listed. So yeah, you're a penny shy of 120 um, and you've got like literally just under 100 pounds left to spend. So you're doing quite well. Yeah. And mine's stalled out. I'm kind of stuck. Um, let me share it. You can see everybody else's then. Um, share that screen. So I went um, sourcing on my birthday. You know that. <clears throat> you know what you do on your birthday. You go shopping, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, and I found a couple of bits, so I'm going to add them to here. Um, well, I found I spent 170 quid. Oh, I see um, that you posted like a huge, like a huge long, um, that's it. <laughs> like a huge massive receipt. I was that's like, it. the dream. Yeah. <laughs> time to uh, time to get back back on it, really. Um, so yeah, I've. I'm at thirty four quid with two pound fifty left to spend. But um ultimately I can't shift any of this stuff. It's really weird. I'll just have to keep reducing the prices, I think. Um, it, it might be a, a listing thing. It might be like the keywords mm. you need to maybe give it a bit of a makeover. Um, yeah, these are obviously not the titles of those items, but obviously, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it just needs I don't know. Have a fiddle with it, and then the algorithm picks it up again. You know? Yeah, exactly. 
I don't really yeah, know. Stop in now or something stupid like that. Um, yeah, so I've got two pound fifty left to spend, which I've already spent. I just need to update the sheet. Um, but Sharon's the one that's absolutely kicking ass. Wow. Yeah, she's take took taking it to another level. I think. Um, which just goes to show that it can work. That was the whole idea, essentially. Um, people complain that essentially they don't have enough money, but if you sell a few things around your house and reinvest that into new stuff, you could essentially turn, I mean, what is it at the moment? Over £300 worth of profit wow. in, in what, a month and a half? Yeah. Two months? That's it, yeah. And I used to do this when I was full-time, um, and I used to pay my car loan off for it, with it. What I would do, I'd sell an item, I'd take the profit, halve it, that half went to the car loan, the other half went to new stuff. Um, so it is doable. Um, Benny, they're struggling to update their sheet, I think. I need to have a chat with them. Sophie's not doing very well, which is fine. And then you've got yours, Adam. Yeah. So do you sell most of yours on Vinted? Um, to be honest, I think um, I, I was just going to, I was speaking um, about this with um, Rummage Around yesterday because I, I went and visited his um, new unit because yeah. he only lived like five minutes away from me. And um, I spoke to him and I said, my my 90 day total, even though it's not massive, is down by about 33%. Yeah. Um, from where it was, but I think Vinted is picking up the slack, right. especially, especially on clothing. Um, and I think that's where a lot of buyers are going now to get clothing mm. rather than eBay, yeah, because buyers got the control, haven't they? You know, the, <clears throat> what portions to choose. Oh, they're obviously going to get the item a bit more cheaper because I, I, I list mine probably about 10 to 15 percent cheaper on Vinted than what I do on eBay. Just mm. to cover those fees, I think yeah. that's where we're going for clothing now and, and footwear. Okay, I've just um, with Jack going back to school, I've kind of had shifted a gear a little bit and trying to get some stuff shifted. So I have, I was already on Vinted and I removed all of the items on there that were on there because I hadn't looked at it for months. I don't know whether they sold or not. Um, and then I've set up Poshmark as well, and I'm using Zip Sale, Claire. Um, oh, nice. So I I'm. Got it. Yeah, I'm paying eighteen pound a month, um, for the two hundred a month um thing to auto delist as well. So I'm going through adding ten a day. I don't know okay. if that's enough. I, um, I, I don't know. I'm just importing ten a day from eBay essentially, um, into Vinted and Poshmark. Um, Poshmark seems to get a lot of followers, but no sales. Yeah, so I um I had a Poshmark, so you know when like of the big all the boom happened mm. and everyone went on there like I got the Poshmark I was uploading stuff sort of trying to do like I haven't got as many listings as, as you two so mm -hmm. just doing like one a day and and then like sharing them all and I, I've only sold one thing but I oh, was getting okay. like like followers every day like I was opening the app and I'm like got 99 plus like notifications <laughs> yeah. I just had to turn them off because it was just like follow 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 and then you try and go onto their page to have a look at their wardrobe yeah. and they're in the US so you can't yeah, see yeah, yeah. what they're selling anyway unless it's you really, switch to the US you can't it's switch really to strange I'm not like it, it feels very different to other apps and sort of more, the more research I've done into it um you kind of have to really sink a lot of time into it like sharing and doing these like sort of live shows mm. um because it apparently sort of it works differently to the other apps you know like ebay like you have to be more active and deep up as well so sort i of mm. have to keep mm. listing and i suppose into all of them yeah. this one you have to kind of it doesn't matter how often you upload it's more about how often you share yeah. and how yeah. much you share and how much you, obviously you're sharing your stuff and then sharing other people's stuff yeah and then mm -hmm. they share your stuff and it's just it just became, it's it's just just became so like I'm like I can't even um I mean the 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 what to call it like the uh, the listing process is really easy even on the app it's like mm. it's quite easy very yeah. sort of similar to vintage it's just very quick there's not a lot, a lot to like fill in but it mm -hmm. just 
I don't know, that aspect of it just kind of really put me off. I tried as long as possible because I was like, I'd rather have my finger in that pie for now and see yeah. see how it goes. But um, I don't know. There's like some some people online are saying that it's really great. Some people online are saying that they've like that there's no point bothering and you should mm. whatever. And um, there's a guy on YouTube called How to Vintage. Um, and he's been doing a platform challenge of like different um like each platform going through listing a load of stuff on it, seeing how it's doing. Yeah. And he did it for Posh, I think Poshmark, TikTok, and ASOS. And he basically just said, Don't bother with Poshmark because you just you just need you just need to sink loads more time into it than the other ones. So it's like, yeah. okay, at least um yeah, probably not stuff you want to hear when you've just opened your Poshmark. Well, this is it. Stuff. I mean, happy to kind of because I tried to add Depop on there as well and it wouldn't upload to depop for some reason i don't know if you have to take different pictures what do you mean no no you can just put the whole okay. one set of pictures to, on and then they'll go oh yeah i'll have to kind of um see if i can reconnect it again yeah reconnect or um just um ask for support or whatever but yeah um it does work yeah. like i've got i've just got um ebay depop and vintage on there now and they all right, okay. they all work good stuff yeah, because I think I need I need kind of to shift all my stuff really. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and just expanding boxes. <laughs> Basically, I mean, I've got up to forty boxes now, of fifty liter boxes. Wow. Yeah. Um, and they, and eBay are kind of dropping my listings off. Did you remember me saying before? Yeah. Oh, like I think the where we last left it, they were like du almost like duplicating your listings. And yes, then, I think, that's then, right. Then you said, I think I saw. Actually, I think I might have seen on Instagram like a whole box of your stuff just got like kicked off eBay. Yeah, yeah. And it was just it. A whole, weirdly, it was the whole box. Like, yeah, you know, it's the whole box. Yeah, I don't, yeah, know, I don't know whether on. it's um the timing of it. It'd been on there for so long, and they've just not bothered renewing in the listing. But I thought good till cancelled means it stays on there for forever. But clearly not. So yeah, I've had to put all that box back on. So I'm basically this. Not here. I've got a pile of stuff I'm going through, um, but I've managed to basically put over two hundred and fifty of my items that were kicked off back on again, um, and rejig the titles and the price essentially. So hopefully that will kick eBay into gear. Yeah, because then at least then again. it's like their clusters like new, completely new listings. Mm. Then yeah, um, <clears throat> yeah. Have you have you had that, Adam? Well, dropping it, listings for eBay. Mm. Um, well, I, I recently sorted out my stock, and I think there was only like two or three items which had dropped off, nothing major. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'm only running at 180 <clears throat> active listings at the minute. That's it. Okay. That mean, but getting back onto what Claire said about, about Poshmark, it is not for me whatsoever. Mm. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to know how George Ross has got ambassador status. When, well, Sophie you know, B has as well, isn't she? She's a really? yeah. She put the work in though. She did, yeah. There's no way George Ross has, has, has sold that many items on Poshmark already to yeah. get that. <laughs> I'm sure that they are actively looking for massive for people who've got massive social presence and YouTube followers. I think to so. increase the platform. Now, for yeah, me, that makes sense. Until until Poshmark gives access for Joe Public to start buying products from there mm. it's, it's why am i going to waste my time putting effort into that where i'm only going to be listing my products and it's only going to look at other resellers yeah it's at the minute it's just a reseller to reseller platform i'd rather oh, put okay. my effort into ebay vintage and i might go back to depop yeah uh, and, and give that another shot why I, I don't see why other resellers are, are going to buy my stuff at the mm. prices that I've got it on, and because they're not going to make any money, it just doesn't make sense to me. I think, um, because every, well, most of the resellers were ship, shipping out their free twenty pound, yeah, um, thing, right? Yeah. So Sophie found that within the first day, all of her credit was taken mm. up by other people's twenty pound items, but you can't cash that out. You have to mm. buy off Poshmark again using your credit, yeah, which I think is a bit. Um, naughty really I mean um, it's, a, it's a good marketing kind of tactic to keep you in the app but I didn't realise that um, 
it wasn't open to the sort of general public yet. I thought it already. I thought it was. No, not not in the UK. It's still. No, it's it's still. Because I. Oh, okay. That might be why. I've signed up to whatnot in the UK because I think um, in the US they have clothing auctions, right? And I was doing that during the week before, like getting picking a box, showing the box on the video, and saying this is what's going to be sold on Thursday night or whatever. So I'm thinking of maybe do I do that on an hourly basis every day just to try and shift some stuff, like over lunchtime. But I don't know whether they have the presence in the UK as much as they do in the US. I don't I don't think so. It's not kind of entered in the kind of sort of general like vocabulary of like the population, not in the way no. that like Vinted and eBay has. Like mm. I think I like I find loads of people and they go oh thanks got it on vintage or whatever like that they kind of it's it's in there now like people that's like the word that you use for buying secondhand clothes online in the same way that ebay is but i think it might be only like sort of specialist people who know about whatnot Mm. Um, i only know about it because like sort of watching other like us um content creators and those people who like sell on on whatnot but i've never yeah but I think is it just for like toys and toys and collectibles at the moment? Yeah, yeah. I think they're going to open up for clothing. Yeah, yeah, I think I'd, I'd heard that, but I'd never. Um, I've applied for it, whether they accept it or not, but who knows? Because I've got a load of Magic the Gathering cards that I could probably sell on there. Mm. Um, yes, um, I'll have to check out that How to Vintage guy. Yeah, he's really good. Like, I think. Because when I was started, or like I just needed someone to tell me which which platform is best, like yeah, yeah, someone who's like been on it for a while, and I couldn't find I couldn't find anything. Like even now, like you type, you type in Poshmark UK into like YouTube, and yeah. all you're finding is just the videos from when it launched. Yeah, I'm not <clears> finding <throat> any videos about people saying what it's like now or yeah, what's the current state of Depop or stuff like that. Like he did a whole video on. On, on that and that's a whole other kettle of fish um, <laughs> but just to kind of I don't know get like kind of someone who's a bit more established to, to tell me like which ones are worth bothering with yeah which so helpful and um, I think eBay's still got to be top of your list right yeah um, it was very much for him it was like just um, and a lot of people it's it's eBay there's yeah. just there's no vintage, no vintage probably a close second yeah and then all the others are just essentially platforms to put your stuff on just in case they sell yeah. on there i think yeah very i'm finding that now that they're like ebay and vintage are like kind of i haven't had as many sales because i've not had, done been as active but definitely mm-hmm. ebay and vintage are still the two more Do- active depop is it's all on there mm. i get like yeah maybe one a week it's not that it's not as active as it used to be really have you, have you guys found the summer slowdown happened to you um that age-old summer slowdown narrative that i've heard i have but i know the reasons why yeah <clears throat> yeah no but <clears throat> i think the main reason for me is i put myself on holiday mode for two weeks um and i didn't really source much or this much i think we spoke mm-hmm. about it the holidays aren't a good a good time for me to source because um, nah. the kids are off and it's not their idea of fun to go to charity <laughs> shops every day. Or your old brother charity shop. Yeah, no matter how much fun I try to make it, go and go and have a hunt to see if you can find some jelly cats. Yeah, it's it a bit boring after a while. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Yeah, so th- there is that, but yeah, but it's it's just down to listing, isn't it? And yeah. and getting new stuff on the store. If you're not if you're not doing it and. Even if you don't, even if you're putting on just one item a day, you're still ticking, you know, you're still getting the algorithm ticking over. But yeah, I think know, that was half that. my my problem sort of towards the end of, I think it may have been the end of June, beginning of July, I was focusing on bookkeeping because that was kind of a lot of people were coming forward for me to do their work for them. And I'm going to do that first because essentially that's what, that's service related. I can just do that. And the stuff can tick around in the background and it's worth more money for my time. Um and then obviously school holidays kicked in. Um so I'm not listing anything during that period really. Um and just basically shipping stuff out. 
when everything's out and everything's out. So I know the reasons why. So I think it's just a combination of right getting it back into game now, kicking it back into gear. Yeah, it's definitely been the same for me. I, I don't have any kids to kind of so that you would think the school holidays would be the perfect time, but just been um just been working a lot in my yeah. my day job. So it's kind of I've just over for many other reasons just not really been as active. So mm. but again, like I've been hearing that it's like the summer. This is my first like summer as an official reseller. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it has been like active like sales have been down but so is my activity so i don't know whether that's linked or yeah it could be it could, well, i mean i think it clearly is linked from my own experience because last year when we had caroline on we went from 500 to 2000 within six months and she was started in april mm. and that led up into q4 um and essentially just the account just kept growing and growing and growing over summer so yeah i think it is activity related it must be because it's not that i mean obviously people are still people go out and about they're spending all of their time outdoors but the people mm. still buying clothes because they need clothes for the summer especially this year where it's been like cold all the way right up until yeah, like cold yeah. weather, all the way up until clothes. september then suddenly heat wave everyone's like oh crap put yeah. the jumpers away get the skirts back out like yeah, um, until next weekend yeah. um well, there is a couple of things I wanted to kind of chat about. What are your, what do you do with your postage rates? I've had a discussion this morning with someone. Essentially, do you have a flat rate for everything, or do you base it on the weight of your item? Because for me, I most of my items are going to be under a kilo, so I flat rate mine by second class yeah. postage. But then I do ship mine with every, so I make a small amount on the postage there. Okay. Do do? I just I just with with Royal Mail everything goes out Royal Mail um, and I know most of the stuff that I sell will just be like small parcel so mm. everything's like three forty nine across all I try and make sure that every platform like everything costs the same um, and if but if it's a pair of shoes there's I know it's going to be like a pair of boots or something that's going to cost more to ship I yeah, might yeah. charge more I tend I do free shipping on everything. Um, I know on Vintage you can pick like how big the parcel will be, mm. um, but most stuff is just sort of three forty nine. Yeah. If it if it goes, that's mm. kind of what I charge. But like if it goes, if it can go large letter, great. But most stuff, most stuff just goes small, small parcels. So you really. don't try, so you don't try and make any extra on the postage. No, no, I just or I um yeah just sort of hike up the price a little bit to sort of cover it. Mm. And because obviously it's not just postage, it's like postage and packing as well. So you've got to, I don't try and make any money on that bit. I just cover those costs. That's just a part of the cost. Right. Okay. Adam? Yeah, I'm just, <clears throat> I'm Royal Mail all the way. I charge postage for mine. Um, <clears throat> flat rate of three, three pound 49. Um, yeah. And that's it. I, I never charge any extra to try and make any more. Um, and my packaging materials, I just factor in as, as part of you know, my my expenses anyway. Yeah, I don't try and rip the customer off. I, I don't. You've got to be competitive, haven't you? Even with your pricing and with your postage mm. as well. That's so why I never do free postage, but I just make sure the buyer pays. You know what it's costing me to to send it to okay. them. That's Only if it's a, it's a big and bulky item like mm. a console or or something like that, then I'll use every. But I only charge, I think I charge five pound twenty mm -hmm. uh, when I'm doing medium parcels with every. Yeah. So I am losing a little bit on the postage, but I'm not too concerned because it, it, if I'm doing a big and bulky item, it's usually got a, a decent price. Um, uh, you know, when I've sold it for attached to it, so I'm happy to yeah. lose that pound or whatever it is. And looking at my feedback and what I kind of, um. So if I show you mine, and it and what you're saying is probably being competitive is my downfall with the postage, and I probably need to change that. So if I um, where are we? Stop. Yeah. So if you look at sort of the average over twelve months for the ac accurate description, well, delivery time is the highest. 
five stars. Um, I ship mine daily with every um, communication and accurate description are fairly, but my reasonable postage costs are the lowest, right? So that would suggest to me that my postage costs are high. Well, what are you charging? Three forty nine. Okay. Across okay. most things, um, under that's how much it costs. Well, well, it if I because what I do, I I select second class where I mail, mm. but then I'll set ship it with every. See, so it's tracked, and every is two pound eighty nine. I think something like two pound eighty seven. But if, um, if you gather, if you if you send it with Royal Mail at three forty nine, yeah, you get a tracking number with it. That's with tracked forty eight, isn't it? Yeah. So if you yeah. if you went into the post office and just said standard second class, you just get a reference number that updates when they try to deliver it. Yeah. Um, and then, but yeah, you get tracked if you did track forty eight. That's what I do. Um, yeah. If I've got a bulk of parcels, I'll just do it all, and then they come to get it. So because um, every drop off is closest to me. Essentially, that's why I use every and it's tracked. So maybe for me, I need to drop my postage costs to every two pound eighty seven, and not, or have a flat rate of three pound, and that extra thirteen pence or whatever is to cover packaging. Yeah. Um. um so it's something I need to look at, um, with regards to, um, my postage costs. And this, I'll show you this quickly. This really annoys me. Where is it? Um, item is listed. <laughs> Neutral feedback. Yes. Item is listed. That that's annoys very strange. <laughs> me. That annoys me. That was that's fair. That's fair because I I didn't think it was used, but he's saying it was used. Um, the item is listed. That's really annoying. That... Does that person do that for a lot of people? I think so. Yeah. Um. Because if you go, obviously, if you go in, can you see the feedback that they leave for other people then? Because um, if they think that that's fine, that uh, like, but I don't, for them, what would be, what would you have to do to give them to get positive feedback from them? Yeah. <laughs> send them like, send them free things and uh, put a million thank you cards. Oh, there. apparently. I don't know. Um, she's only ever left one other neutral. I do have to question if this was new as it had sellotape where normally there was a perforated plastic piece that you have peeled when it's new. But all the others are like excellent speedy delivery, speedy delivery. Yeah, very strange. Maybe she just wasn't 100% satisfied but couldn't really leave negative feedback because it was... Yeah, as at least it was as listed, but yeah, exactly. maybe, it, maybe it wasn't what they wanted. Um, Can't please everyone, mate. They can't, <laughs> can you? You can't please everyone. Um, better neutral than negative, I suppose. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, it's better that they leave that feedback instead of going, "Oh, it wasn't the colour that I wanted, so I'm gonna." I had even though it was as listed, I'm I gonna. Had, <clears throat> I had that yesterday. Literally, it was when I hang out on the um, cladding wall here. It looked black and white top. When she got it home, she put it on a jet black sofa and it was slightly brown. So she uh, complained about it. I said, well, you can return it if you like. And I'll give you a refund when it comes back. Um, so yeah, so when it's on the brown cladding, it looks black. But when it's on her jet black sofa, it looks slightly brown. Um, oh, how weird. Yeah. Right, so there's probably a slight tone to it, like a slight brown tone to it. That shows up on a jet black background. <laughs> anyway, um, what else was there? When you guys have something that's sitting around for a long time, do you um switch it to auction, or do you guys kind of reduce the prices down and until a certain level, and then you pull it off the the site? How do you kind of over a period of time, how do you how does your item work? Like, what's the process of your item shifting? Does that well, make sense? I try I try and keep mine at the same price of what I've listed at for the first ninety days. Yeah. Um, 
and then I look at it and then I'm, I'm thinking about why why is it not sold? What what have I done wrong? What could I do to change it? Um, and then I just stick to, um, I cancel the item, sell similar, reduce the price, maybe maybe look into the item specifics. You know, we yeah. can add info. I'm guilty of just adding just the basic info to get mm -hmm. it listed. I don't really spend much time going into all the, you know, the nitty gritty ones in the second columns where you can really niche the item down. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should probably do that instead of reducing the price. Yeah. But going on to auctions is a very last resort for me. Very last resort. But yeah, because <clears throat> the stuff that I put on last week had been around for over a year. Yeah. Um, and one of my friends tagged me this morning um, and said, pretty much this is what he puts on every single listing on eBay. All right, so sent using insured and tracked courier service. See images for best description and condition. Packaged and tracking, updated usually same day, and under most circumstances dropped off to the nearest courier. 100% positive customer feedback, trusted seller, part of GSP. And that's essentially everything he puts underneath in the description, part of his listings. Now, that would probably add on, what, 30 seconds to put that in on every listing. So I, I don't do that. Um, the title essentially gets copied down, and that's me done. Unless it's like a skirt, and I'll put in the title waist inches, length inches, and then yeah, I'll I'll admit my my descriptions are basically as basic as it can get. I will only um I'll only add extra if there's like any defects mm -hmm. for the item, like a mark or you know if it's missing a piece or anything like that. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, as it is, um, mm. but I think, I, was... I think Sorry, maybe if you put that extra. Maybe if you didn't list as much, maybe stop. Maybe instead of listing ten items a day, you listed eight items a day. But that that time, just spend that extra bit of time just going through those little specifics and just making that listing as bulky as you can with as much information as possible. Might be better yeah. going forward. Could be a good idea. Um, yeah, Claire? I haven't heard many people say like whether those item specifics work or not. I don't know. I haven't had a definitive answer of like whether it's worth because sometimes I've gone I've spent time going through everything and trying to get them down as low as possible and sometimes I just sort of whack it up down and leave it mm. um, so but in terms of like description I'm probably I, I probably put loads of detail in there even if it's stuff that they can see on the you know on the picture like sort of describe what kind of blue it is so that like like with that woman um, mm. We're all on the same page about what colour it is and yeah. if there's pockets on the front or what's on the back or like what material it is. Or I've just put loads of info in there. Um, but again, I don't know whether that's has that helped. I don't know. In terms of like stuff that's been hanging around for a while, I'm still experimenting with that because I've got stuff that's been here for like a few months and then mm -hmm. sometimes it'll sell and I'm like, oh, great, like that, that's got home now. Yeah. And sometimes yeah. it's like... I bought it thinking, oh, this is really cool. Like it's gonna, it's gonna do really well, and then it just hasn't. So I'm still trying to figure out what to do with it. And I've done some stuff on auction, but then like when I've got to the very end of like the auction and the costs, costs and stuff, I found that I've like lost money, or yeah. I've, I've just broken even on that, and it's just they've just yeah they've just covered costs, and but it's out of my house now. So I'm yeah, still trying to figure out what to do with it and. I've got some stuff now that I've been looking at thinking that's been here for a few months and is it going to sell? I don't know. How long do I leave it before I start fiddling with it? I'm not if sure. you think about, um, would you rather having it getting your money back in there so you can invest it into something else that might sell even quicker than having it sit there for months and months and months yeah. not doing anything? You'd want to get that money back, any type of money back to invest into something else that would make you a profit. Yeah, the money and the space as well. Mm. Um, just or even the like the physical and the mental space. So I've got stuff hanging around, and it's like I don't know. Some of it, it might be that it because we've not passed that season yet, so it might be that it's a kind of a winter item. See what happens over Christmas. Yeah, I'm kind of thinking I might just leave it for this year and leave everything up there, and then maybe in the new year when the like a new season starts, just get rid. But some of it is just sort of lingering, and. Um, 
but I haven't got I haven't got as much stock as you as you. No, 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 it's really crazy. So it's, it's not as much crazy. of an issue. But if I had the like kind of the stock level that you had, I think I probably would go through it a bit more. I've only got like three boxes and a rail. That's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I think I might have to go through my listings by start date and just see because there's some on there that are 2021. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, and just see what where they are and if I need to ship it, shift it. Oh, April 22 is the oldest. But then it's that's still think, over a year old, so yeah. yeah. What's the majority of your stock? Like what? Um, what? so if I do, how can I? It's mainly clothing. So what I, I what I was thinking is, is if maybe you've got like maybe if you've got like a couple of items which are the same size or the same brand, maybe you could make little bundles, and mm. the customer might see that as. A bit more of an incentive to buy more, and yeah. you could put the price a little bit. I don't know. Maybe like yeah. you could sell three. I'm just saying, like Burgos t-shirts, for example. You could yeah. have like two Burgos t-shirts on, and you've probably gone listed at like so what, twelve ninety nine, fourteen ninety nine. You could maybe do a bundle of two for nineteen ninety nine. You could get them shifted quicker. Customer might think they're getting a bit more value for money. That's something I'm looking at doing anyway. With when my clothing's not shifting. Yeah, it's not bad. I mean, I've got, I've just typed in fat face and I've got 14 of them on. Essentially, I could just pick ones that are all size 14, UK 14, and bundle them yeah. together. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. And just take think... those same photos, I suppose. Use those same photos and could create do. one listing. Yeah. And you could maybe like, you, you could maybe use like a, a, a collage, you know, like a collage app to, you know, like make a, a one picture, but with the, five or six individual items making a collage and then yeah and mm. do it that way um also as well with the with the clothing I, part of part of me part of, i mean my my main stuff is clothing and footwear yeah but i think i've learned more the last 12 months of brands not to buy and you're just picking it up because oh it, you know it's quite an enticing price at the charity shop mm. maybe like two quid for a you know a, a polo shirt by let's just say fat face um but then you 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 listed it but it might not it won't sell as quickly or it's not as a highly desired brand yeah so i think the, <clears throat> some brands are really really i did a um <clears throat> i did a little video basically um i reviewed all of my sales for the previous 12 months and pivoted them I exported them into Excel, pivoted them, and had the average sell price for every brand, essentially. Um, and it came out that <clears throat> things like Bowdoin, White Stuff, um, all those brands were like anywhere between £10, £15, £20. <clears throat> so it kind of narrowed it down to, say, five to ten brands that you go and look for that you know that are going to shift for those and I'll do the same again this year, just to see what's changed. Um, I mean, some some brands do great for some people. It's like Orvis. Mm. Orvis seems to do great for loads of people. I, I've had Orvis stuff in uh, on my store loads of times. Mm. It's never shifted. <clears throat> I think if you um if you find a buyer that buys you from quite regularly, because East does well for me. Okay. Um, I don't know why. But anywhere between fifteen and twenty quid for them. Um, and we only found that out by getting these bags from Arthur Rank mystery bags, and there was a load, load of beast in there, and they shifted really quickly. Um, but no, yeah, so good. Like, oh, when, I, when I've been heavy with um, when I've been heavy with clothing, I've I've just done mystery boxes for people. Yeah. Um, I know my mystery boxes <laughs> are, are pretty good uh, for yeah. what I have been put in there. It's just that I've even not listed it properly or, you know, made it look as appealing to the customer. Because um, I, I thought about this last night, of whether to have like a, a listing that just says five kilo of women's dresses or something like that, and then having it at a set price. And then just put in such brands as what's actually already listed on my eBay yeah. store. And then Give it a go. picking out the older stuff that's sitting in there and, and sending it that way 
Um, and then maybe ask if there's a certain size that they want. Yeah. If they're if they're all just one size, then I can add it add it in there. Because <clears throat> it'd be basically something along the lines of when you get the kilo sales at um they they do a few around here, but they're about eight to ten pound a kilo. Um, so it'd be similar to that. So maybe five kilos for like 50 quid or yeah. 45 pounds, something like that. Um, and then, and then offer free postage on that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Might as well. I mean, can't know. Um, can't hurt. Yeah, can it? It? Because at least then, you, then I would get to choose what goes in it. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I might do one of those listings today. Worth it. You could try if you try one and it sells, you know, you're not going to lose anything, are you? No, and even do variations of those like two kilo, yeah. five kilo, ten kilo, something like that, and see what actually if people actually do go for those kind of kilo sizes. Because <clears throat> I've got over 1,300 listings, you see, so I've got plenty of stock to give. Wow. <laughs> Claire's, Claire's face. What? I have and, 63. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but you probably sell more than me. It's man, man. No, <clears throat> I, I mean, at the moment, I, it's, it's probably about one or two a week. Like, but again, oh. that's just because of activity. Like, I've been to <clears throat> my best months, it's like one a day. Yeah. But that's me. Like, also, I'm really active, active on social media, like everything. It's all. The cut like the the wheels are turning. So yeah. Well, Claire, I mean, I'm in a position where I have got quite a lot of stock which is listed and unlisted. If you wanna, if you wanna take some from me, I could do you like a, a good price so you can build up some more stuff in your store. Oh, I've um, got, I've got plenty of stuff waiting in my bedroom. <laughs> it's just a case of, it's just a case of actually getting on there. It's not a case. It's not a question of like buying it because it's all there. It's a question of me actually. Pulling my finger out, you know. Yeah. Yeah. This, this if, is, if, if you ever on. need anything though, just um, hit well, me yeah. up. And I, I've, I've always got stuff which I, I need to um, I need to shift. So yeah. Have you got an Instagram? Yes. What is it? West Lanks flips. West Lanks. I will follow you after this. This is all my stuff to get one. Nice. Go on. <laughs> That, that looked like a cauldron then, a big black mm -hmm. cauldron. It did, didn't it? Yeah. yeah. That bag as well. That bag as well. That's what I've got going on. So, yeah, I've got plenty of stuff as well. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, do you guys go to any car boots? I didn't know. I went, uh, I'll be honest, the majority of my, where my stock has been sourced from has either been from charity shops or Facebook Marketplace. Mm. Uh, I, I didn't like going to car boots. I just don't like the whole people jumping in the back of people's cars when they pull up and stuff like that. I think it's just bad manners. It doesn't sit well with me. However, that being said, I was getting a bit sick of the prices in charity shops. Mm. So I went to Car Boot in Warrington um, a couple of weeks ago and I set myself a budget. I only took £80 and I absolutely cleared up with the amount of stuff that I got. Mm. It was like I was getting, I was getting like Humax uh, Freeview HD recorders for four quid, mm. uh, Nike Air Force ones, two quid, uh, um, camcorders, all sorts of stuff. And I came back with, with so much good quality stuff mm. it was ill so i think for me you now car boots even though i don't like getting up or doing all the stuff that is associated with them is the best way for me to get good quality stuff at a decent price yeah yeah because um my main one is arthur rank and they've got a retail hub in sawston but also they've also have a spin-off sort of outlet next door or opposite the the stuff that they can't shift goes in there for like one or two quid so they essentially have a big warehouse where you can go in and have a rummage around and then opposite if the stuff isn't if it's below a fiver in that bit they shift it across into the sort of retail hub um so i go in there 
I went in there last week um, and picked up all of that stuff um, that you saw on the receipts. Um, that's essentially the main one to go to. But yeah, the high street charity shops are getting ridiculous now, aren't they? Especially Age UK. I think Age UK have lost the plot. <laughs> they, in, in the one in, in our local town centre now, they've got like they've got their own dedicated designer rail. Really? And, yeah, and they're putting on like ridiculous prices for items which which look terrible. Yeah, like, the most grubbiest faded Ralph Ralph Lauren polo. Like, so the original colour is like purple, but it's faded that badly. It looks more like a, a lilac colour. And they're still they're still trying to charge 15 quid for it. It's not going to happen. No. There was a couple of, on the high street, each, which is the East Anglia Children's Hospice. Um, They've got a 50% sale on at the moment, on across the stores in Cambridge. And there's stuff in there that I turned down like three weeks ago because it was 15, 20 quid. Now it's down to like 10, but you're going to get 25 quid for it. So I picked up a couple of those. But yeah, the prices are double digits now. Yeah, I'm finding that as well. Like even, um, I think probably British Heart Foundation are probably the most expensive in my area. I tend, mm. I'd go in there sometimes, but like I, I don't think I've ever bought anything from there. But there's one, there is a cancer research in my town centre that's everything is a pound. And that's like my main haunt. And yes. I just go in and look at every single thing. And I found some good stuff in there. Um mm. and it like it sells and it's good, it's good quality. I don't know, because there's another there's a bigger cancer research site on like a retail part. So I don't know whether they just send all of their stuff that doesn't sell to them. A bit like some, of it, some of it is some of it's a bit grubby, some of it looks like it hasn't actually been washed. Yeah, and like yeah. you get it home, you wash it, it looks great. Um and a lot of it is like sort of high street, fast fashion, lots of Primark. But every now and then I'll find something that's really, that's like, oh, that's that's cool. And I'll just snatch it up. Um, <laughs> that's like my, and that's off that's my name. <laughs> but they are, they, some of them are getting expensive. And because like, even when, um, when I lived in Brighton, a lot of them had like vintage or like designer sections. Mm. And like, that's fine. Like I'm kind of, I feel a bit bittersweet when I'm in a charity shop that is charging what they should be because I'm like, good for you, you know what you're doing, but also I can't make yeah, any money out of this shop. <laughs> like, but they're selling like my I think is it Sue is it Age UK or Sue Ride or one of them has got like a section that's um like wedding dresses and prom dresses and stuff like that, and they all look really nice, but they're selling them at the same price that like I would sell them. Mm. So I, there's no point in me buying from there. No, you've got but no value a huge selection. Yeah. So otherwise I could have it would have been really good. But like the yeah, some some charity shops are getting a bit more clued in, um, which is kind of like it's I don't know. Yeah, I don't I know think how I feel about that. EBay. Most of them do check eBay. I sold that wedding dress that Laura picked up for I sold about eighty and she bought it for fifty. Um but I had that one, I had it up for two hundred and I took an offer of I went down to like hundred and twenty. And then someone bought it. For, I think bought it for a hundred, but I had the twenty percent discount through July and August. Um, and I think that's probably the reason why my sales are down as well. Twenty percent discount over that summer period, the value of sales anyway. Um, yeah, I, I ran I ran a coupon as well um, through the summer just to boost things up. I, I did twenty percent. I haven't got anything on at the moment. However, I am thinking about doing just a flat 10% or maybe 15% as a max between mm. up until um, maybe like the end of October. Okay. And then I might be, but then I'm thinking about maybe doing like um, a, a one-off on, on, on for Black Friday week. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Black Friday. And what my, my plan is, I think, is to get as much stuff listed as I possibly can. And then anything that's been hanging around too long, I'm actually going to put it down as like probably 30% discount. Yeah. And see what happens there. Okay. People buy anything at Christmas, won't they? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's like say you build up your store for Q4, don't you? Is that the saying? Build up your store for Q4. There you go. Yep. Um, Cool. Well, we're getting towards the sort of we're at the fifty 
minute mark now, aren't we? So, are there anything that you guys want to chat about? You got any questions? Um, no. Just yeah. a stupid one. When does Q4 start? <laughs> First of October. October. So it's essentially October, November, December. Okay. Is this, your, is this your first Q4 then, Claire? Um, well, I started in October last year, so that was that would have been that yeah. would have been my first Q4. Um, but I, but again, because I was just starting, I didn't have like loads of sales. But this is this will be sort of my first Q4 is a bit more established. Mm. Bit more, um, I think I think this year as well will be better than last year if there's no issues around the postal strikes, which there were oh, yeah. last Christmas. Yeah, that was an absolute nightmare because he because when Royal Mail went on strike, then everyone was obviously using every or Yodel as a as you know to do the shipping, and then they got swamped with too many parcels. Yeah, so hopefully, fingers crossed, if there's no issues with postage across the country, I think it'll be a stronger Q4 for a lot of people. Mm. Yeah, I think so. Fingers crossed. Yeah, indeed, absolutely. <laughs> Cool. Well, if there's nothing else to, to chat about, we'll leave it there. Belton, it's been a pleasure. Yes. Nice yeah. to meet you, Adam. Yes. Yeah, yeah. How, how do you think your uh, your first Zoom chat went? Oh, loved it, mate. Yeah? Yeah. It's just nice to chat with about the, the, the same things that everybody else has got the same interest in. I mean, my yeah. wife hasn't got any interest in reselling whatsoever. <laughs> my you're only, you're my only interest she has. Is that little noise when it comes through on your phone? Oh, what? <laughs> oh, yeah. how much that going for? Uh, how much have we got today? I have. I, I did think about like hiring my other half because she's got like a nose for certain things. We do a. I used to do a um ten pound dens versus challenge or five pound. You basically had ten quid, a bit like bargain hunt. You got ten quid and you have to go around the charity shop and you buy three items. For that ten quid, um, and then they all get set to ninety nine p auction start price, and then let them fly and see what actually who wins, and she would always win. <laughs> yeah, she would always win. Yeah, I think about doing that again soon. Yeah, I'll be up for that. Me out of a couple of resellers. They'll be face to face though, unless you want to travel down from Lancashire down to to uh, Cambridge. It's fine. <laughs> Probably cost me five times. As yeah, that. exactly. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, there's a couple of friends that get involved as well. So um, see if they can beat me. But Laura generally wins every single time. So she's better at it. Than I am. <laughs> anyway, cool. Good to see you all. Yeah, take um, care, mate. I'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye.